the year may have more than one season Yet I can remember but one When rivers and lakes are freezing And the mountains in whiteness are spun When snowflakes are falling so fast And winter has come here at last Two boards upon cold powder snow Yodeling has a diverse history, but it's part of certain aspects of folk. But in Europe, mountaineers used yodels as, as a way to communicate across chasms in the Alps and things like that. I've never heard anybody else who brought in the European mountaineering style of yodeling that Bill brings to his music. And his really strong interest in mountaineering and skiing and the fact that he was a musician and just automatically picked up songs when they were associated with any of these traditions. And this whole thing about mount, combining mountaineering and skiing. Bill is Bill. Well, I was kind of in awe of Bill because I was told that he was the first person to ski the Grand Teton. And, and I had seen that and I was thinking, how did he do that? It's an event that uh, all, all skiers consider to be probably the, the benchmark of ski mountaineering here in, in the lower 48. Bill isn't a classic anything because he makes everything his own. I think Bill's philosophy of skiing, philosophy of life are very similar. And that is that it's based on uh, just going out there and doing it and, and enjoying it. Fun is doing what you're doing when you're doing it. That is the greatest enjoyment there is in life. You are so involved in what you're doing that all else is out of the picture. You know, I think the combination of uh, Bill's mountaineering experiences, his ski experience, and his music all, all work in, they blend in and meld in together. And I think one enhances the other for him. I first came to Jackson back in, in 52, actually, to Sun Valley to ski. But we stopped off up on, on Togarty Pass because I noticed a rope toe way over on the far side. So I went over and skied on that rope toe, and we were going to pay for it, of course, but the guy didn't charge anything. And we thought, boy, this is a nice place. <laughs> and then we came to Snow King and decided, well, instead of going on to... Uh, Sun Valley would stay over and ski Snow King. So that was my first skiing of Snow King. As we left town, going over Teton Pass, we all said, well, we're gonna, I'm gonna live here someday. And the other guys haven't made it yet. <laughs> you know, time to go west, young man. So I came here realizing that maybe I could make a year-round living Playing music is important to him. Major venues where there are audiences who appreciate the music, and I think the feedback that you get from an audience is important to him. When I first came, the music in the valley mainly was uh, bar music, uh, country western. I was charmed by it, I thought it was fabulous. This fellow named Ron Scott walked into the stagecoach bar and said, hey, you guys could have some music on Sunday night. And he started playing February 1969. And week number three, Bill joined him. I was skiing up on the pass and came down and, and joined in with him. It was a rough scene, <laughs> to say the least. He was playing for cowboys, OK? And the cowboys were really itching for a fight. And they would have a fight every Sunday. Okay, that was part of the entertainment. Turned into a dance scene, which it is now, to what is a five-piece band. And that was hard to, to sell to the management because it wasn't making, it, we didn't bring in that much money. 
We still don't. The stagecoach never could make it as a listening concert scene. The Hoot, on the other hand, a different venue. It's a different setup. The Hoot was strictly nobody talking. Strictly. It requires a certain degree of concentration and really learning how to put your songs out there so that you get the audience and you hold their attention. It's not a band situation. The idea is that we have a chance to show what we can do and get better at it. Every Sunday and Monday, he's at the coach and he's at the hoot. He's the guy who's always there doing it, no matter whether anybody else shows up. By the time I joined the Stagecoach Band in 1982, Bill has, Bill isn't some Pete Seeger clone, but there's all these other elements that, that combine to make Bill Briggs' music something unique. Listen to him. I think you couldn't be at Dartmouth in the 50s. There were certain skiing songs that everybody knew, but he was there when these 10th Mountain Division veterans came back from the war and went to college. And uh, so he learned those songs. He's the only guy I know who does that kind of mountaineering yodeling and has put those to songs that didn't originally have those yodels. Putting yodels to songs people knew, okay, had, an, had a charm. It's a beautiful, melodic uh, harmony, if you like. So I learned one Swiss yodel, and, and it would fit with Down in the Valley. It's always been my first song that I would learn with a new instrument because it had only two chords. <laughs> and I could put in a, this yodel that would fit. My sister took me skiing first, and it was a terrible thing. I was in tears, and I decided right then that I wouldn't go skiing with anyone else. I'll do this on my own. Just a block away from my home was a, a Haynes estate, and I could, I could go around, right, and tackle whatever snow and steepness I wanted. It was great fun. I had a great time doing that by myself. I being the only one on skis. From there, got used to, let's say, more advanced skiing, as it were, and then went to Dartmouth College. Tried to get on the ski team, but I couldn't make it because too many were on the, too many Olympic skiers were already on the team. There was no room. <laughs> that got me started. Theories and systems of skiing. Then we came to Snow King. I had a desire from the beginning to make this skiing uh, available or possible for other skiers. Snow King is important as a ski area because it, it, it is uh, the oldest and it was the first ski area in Jackson Hole, founded in 1939. It's an old, established, rugged kind of a ski area. Bill bought the ski school from Bill Ashley in 1967. And he started Great American Ski School, which is based on his philosophy and, and techniques in, of teaching skiing. Briggs will teach any age from 1 to 101 if he has a chance. I like teaching them all. Each one has a challenge because the student is a challenge. It's finding something that I didn't know that works for that person. I guess the way to sum up Bill's philosophy of ski instruction would be function precedes form. It was just a little bit of getting people to think a little bit differently about their skiing before heading off to more challenging terrain. Oh, here's to the tread of the mountain top. To have something that I could do on my own, which was as much fun, it was fun to do. It was fun to make tracks, new tracks in the snow. And you know, Bill has, he's had a fused hip all his life. 
and he skis with that fused hip. And if you watch him, you never even know that there's anything there um, that would impair a person from skiing. No great asset to have only one hip that works, okay? Because you kind of have them both go. And I was pretty impressed to learn that he was the first guy to ski the Grand. When people say it can't be done, I say it is possible, they say it's impossible. Well, you gotta prove them wrong. You have this challenge. You gotta, you're gonna have to go up over this ice ripple. Okay, at the bottom of the cool one. How are you going to get down from that? Well, the next challenge is, well, Jesus, how do you possibly kick footholds on something that's, you know, 55 degrees? Terrible trying to get the crampons off because the leather straps, leather straps, okay, are frozen. The straps off, get the, and then you get the skis on. How to get skis on? Or, or I crossed and there was no flat place there, okay? And it's all frozen, solid, crust. Slippery as all hell, you go to put the ski on, you start going backwards off the north face. And... He had taught himself to get up from, from any kind of a fall, whether you're falling head first downhill or whatever it is, without stopping. Because on the angle of pitch of the Grand Teton, you're not gonna stop. And, and you start going down below the chalk stone and there's snow coming in washing out the entire cooler, okay? Well, you gotta wait for that to go by <laughs> and then try and race down the rest of the way, get down the fixed rope. Wonderful thing, skiing through the frost feathers, or skiing through those, I've never done that before or I'll ever do it again, I'm sure. Incredible, they break up and tinkle, tinkle, tinkle and you're going through these tinkling bells and uh, and the whole thing starts rushing down the hill and you get vertigo and you can't tell what's up and what's down. It's a wonderful feeling when after you f finish one of these things, and there's been a, a few of them, way up at the top of, of uh, a tone scale. And so I called up Virginia from the airport and I said, I just skied the Grand yesterday and I can still see the tracks this morning. She said, stay right there, I'll come right out. So she came out and got in her airplane and... I, mean, I must admit, when I saw the tracks, I was pretty dumbfounded. It was a lonely trip, you know. There's no one else within. They, they, they did climbing the mountain and all that sort of thing. But no one was skiing with him. He was on his own. Great experiences and they're all alone, okay? These were like when I started skiing. The Grand was uh, just a lucky chance. Uh, there have been other lucky chances. I mean, we just had this induction into the Ski Hall of Fame. But it wasn't the induction, it was my performance at the end. I don't know, I, I just, you know, stand, I got a standing ovation for the song, okay? It's for the song. Okay, the song was super, and the yodel was super, and, and like skiing the grand. You know, this, is a, this is a classic. This is going to be a real classic. Doing that beautiful yodel at, the, at luncheon was a classic. <laughs> For Fred Islam, Pfeiffer and Villar, Junior Benus and Peppy Stiegler. I've gone up the Tetons with the best they could find. And there was not one among them who could leave me behind. But now I'm awkward as a new boy who's 